can do this morning. Just want to thank you for always being there whenever I need you. I want to let you know I'm glad you care. Just want to thank you, Lord, for being there. So, for the community, we want to thank you, Lord, for the days that you have given with the Holy Father. So we just, every one of us, we say, we want to thank you today. Lord Jesus, Lord, we want to thank you for these great days that you have given us, Lord. For us today, Lord, as a community, as a group of people who are gathered in your presence, Lord Jesus. Lord, we just want to say, thank you. So we just say, we want to thank you, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord. Just Blessings that fell. So all what I am asking you today, hold the next person's hand, believing that you are holding the nation, we are holding each other's hands as we pray for this first thing. We thank you for the country, Lord Jesus, for the blessing that you sent us upon us, Lord Jesus, for the visit of the Holy Father and also the canonization of Saint Joseph Vas, where he was. We know that the missionary saint whom you have given us, Lord Jesus. Lord, we want to thank you as a country as we hold on. One heart, one mind, one soul, Lord Jesus. Here we are, Lord Jesus. We want to thank you on behalf of our country, Lord Jesus. We want to thank you, Lord. Just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. 
my sister Jesus is there that's why how he cares it's not about a person we cannot take glory of how why he came here it's because God had planned for this no one else no human being can plan it we can call we can invite we can do many things but still it's the time where the Lord wants to be here Lord Jesus we thank you we just want to thank you Lord Jesus for these great days that you have given us Lord Lord the things that you have given us Lord Lord we believe Lord when your disciples were with you Lord Jesus how much they would have cared how much they would have loved to be with you Lord Jesus Lord that's the same experience you gave us Lord Jesus Lord Peter St. Peter Lord Jesus the representative of St. Peter walking into this country Lord Jesus and blessing each and every one of us every eye that saw Lord Jesus was so impressed it's not because there was something that flowed out of him Lord Jesus Lord we all know none went empty-handed Lord Jesus no one went empty-handed everyone was filled with your love Lord Jesus Lord your grace upon him O Lord Jesus Lord we just want to ask you Lord bless him Lord thank him Lord Jesus Lord Lord fulfill the mission that he's on at this moment in Philippines Lord Jesus Lord it's your power it's your glory Lord Jesus we thank you once again and we praise you Lord hallelujah 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 praise you Jesus thank you Lord Amen praise the Lord praise the Lord praise the Lord so my brother my sister it's an amazing 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 experience I think you can talk you can talk I don't know till when and sometimes I don't know we don't normally talk about it men won't say you know tears come into your eyes when you look at him even on television because when you see him uh, sometimes touching kids uh, children disabled you wonder that heart you know you can be the hard-hearted man <laughs> or the hard-hearted person but you know that breaks you that that's what you mean by breaking that's a breaking that happens we don't know that's what it is when God says don't be hard-hearted that Lord knows that he can break through an incident so today I'm going to share something uh, we all have heard about this uh, very common but today's gospel the gospel reading uh, taken from uh, book of Mark uh, chapter 2 from verses 1 downwards a few days later when Jesus again entered Capernaum the people heard <clears throat> that he had come home now we must uh, the chapter before there's a connection in the chapter before because he was in Capernaum and then he went out to Galilee he went out to Galilee because he said I should not be here in one place and he decides to go there and there were so many healings you know people demonic people the healings and after that a leper was healed so there was a connection now after a few days what has happened he has come home so home is Capernaum for him and when people normally hear things happen what happened they all gather no? I mean that's always the case even any prayer meeting any place where I say things are happening there what happens every one of us rush there every one of us rushed there and we have seen like home how many people rush even if you say something's happening there's a statue over there there's something happening over there what do we do we all go sometimes but now when you look back uh, what happened about three or four years ago we don't know what has happened to those statues I don't, I don't know I'm not you know people rush it's good that's a faith that we have that's a faith that we have but see what happens all these people and then they heard that Jesus was back home when they heard when they knew so this is the this is what you have to understand they knew they heard that Jesus what did they do verse 2 so many gathered there was no room left not even outside the door and he preached the word to them just you, know, you need to picture this because this is a picture game today this is a picture story because every one of us have heard this so what has happened now everything is packed no room at all it's just like the Pope's visit to Sri Lanka it's just like the Pope's visit to Sri Lanka every place is what 
packed. No room. All those blocks are packed. You know, all the squares. Every square, you want, if you want to creep through, no way. No luck in everything. And what were they doing? They were listening to the word of God. Why did they get themselves in there for a reason? So, they didn't just come to see Jesus. My brother, my sister, even if you think that we just went to see Pope, no. That's all different. Because we see how many people were praying at that time. How many people were singing hymns at that time. It was just another, another occasion. People didn't come to see a star. But this is a star fallen from heaven, my brother, my sister. So because of that, there was an atmosphere. The entire atmosphere was holy. So here we see Jesus preaching the word of God. When the word of God is preached, what happens? People are attracted. So that is why even in our four-step retreats, people wonder how people can stay for a whole day listening to a four-step retreat. Some have followed it five times, six times, sometimes ten. But still, they are, what are they doing? Still seated. <laughs> still seated, still listening. My brother, my sister, just imagine that is the power of the word of God. This is the power of word of God, my brother, my sister. There is some attraction, there is some power. No one will know. That's why sometimes some people want, they're asking, they're asking, how is it that we only sometimes for 10 minutes, some of the priests ask, we, when we preach for 10 minutes, people can't wait. How is that these people wait for, for so many hours? So don't ask us. <laughs> it's the word of God. When the word of God preach is preached, when the good news is preached, people are attracted to the good news. Because the entire four steps is the good news. Broken into four. This is what Jesus preached and this is what we are preaching. So that's what you remember, my brother, my sister. When the word of God, when the good news is preached, people are attracted and people know what's happening. However much they get distracted, sometimes people bring for the first time. I, I don't think my son will listen. I don't think my daughter will listen. We, I just brought. But to see, they come for the second time and now they are coming for the prayer meeting also. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. See what happens after that. My brother, my sister. Some men came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four of them. Now this is the most beautiful thing. Some men came bringing a paralytic. What do you mean by a paralyzed person, my brother, my sister? What do you mean? What is the idea that you have when, when you say it's paralyzed? Huh? There is no movement at all. There is no movement at all. You are in a helpless position. You are helpless, no movement, and you have to depend on a person or people or your family members. No, because I, I have looked after a person and I know how dependent they become. And then your whole thing is the bed. Whole thing is the bed because you're 24 hours, how many other, maybe you live for another 20, bed, you and friends. That is all you have to remember that. That is all you have. And now see here, again, how many people? Four people are carrying a paralytic carried by four of them. So why are they bringing? So we'll see that. Verse 3. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd. We'll need to stop here. My brother, my sister, what happens? They bring this person and what happens? That's a huge crowd. I said, today we have to learn something. And because I remember when a person shared with me when the Pope's visit, they said in their square, they were packed. They were packed. And at the last moment, at the last moment, there were priests bringing disabled people and trying to put them in. And then these people, not that in a very bad reaction, they said, oh, we have been there from last night, we all should have brought them. <laughs> now see, even for these people, 
so why do we go sometimes why do we why are we packed sometimes it's because of our selfish reasons also my brother my sister we want to receive but no one else can come in don't now if you are there would you have given the place i don't know if someone comes someone you a uh, person who is sick is coming and you have got the first place from last night you know you were the person who held on to the railing and pope was going this way would you have given that place you were there and from 10 o'clock in the night what would you do now everyone will say yes i would give <laughs> my brother my sister none of us would have given we would have said okay try this one try that one not me because i have been here from last night 10 o'clock i can't let this person go but a genuine sick person here there is a paralytic no room what do they do my brother my sister if you take someone and if someone what would have happened only other alternative is go back home otherwise go back home that's it see the obstacles that these people had only other thing is go back home my brother my sister if you bring a person today maybe a sick person maybe someone if the doctors have already said no hope that's the first obstacle mm. doctor says no you cannot be cured that cannot be cured what do you do are we going back and just going to sit and cry are we going to sit and cry see there was a major obstacle for them they couldn't take this man to this room many of us have this it's because maybe our family members i can't bring my husband i can't bring my wife i can't bring my children why there is an ob- there, there are the obstacle you are waiting to bring them to jesus but what happens you always find an obstacle i don't think he will ever come i don't think she will ever come i don't think we will we can do this so we see the obstacle and then we move out of that place we move out of that my brother we don't go beyond that point we don't go beyond it's packed packed with ideas packed with concepts packed with people's motion saying no you can't do that useless don't try people have already given us you will never get that promotion you will never be healed you or your struggle your financial crisis will never be solved the bank has told you it's sure but what are we going to do are we going to go back no my brother my sister see what happens four people this is what you call intercessory prayer today <laughs> this is what you mean by intercessory prayer four people who had faith what did they do they carried this man see the beautiful thing when they knew that there was no room here when they knew that they can't bring this paralytic in the normal way it's a normal way normal ways things will happen you go to church you pray everything is happening but this is not the normal way now they are trying something very different what do they do they made an opening in the roof above jesus and after digging through it lowered the mat the paralyzed man was lying on what did they do my brother my sister they broke open the what the roof they knew beneath this roof was who jesus my brother my sister beneath the problem is jesus today beneath this roof we need to break the roof we need to break the roof of our lives today there are so many obstacles so many obstacles if you are not willing to break through if you are not willing to break through what happens you're going to miss jesus there is jesus beneath that my brother my sister we as intercessors we need this is what you call four people who believed who had faith carried this man this man would have not had faith at all i'm sure because he would have been helpless he would have been wondering what's happening this would have been like a last resort for him but for the four people who carried they had faith they had faith that there is a man who can cure this person 
So that's why they went into the extent of opening the roof. My brother, my sister, we would have wondered what will people tell when they open the roof? Somebody else's house, my brother, my sister. If, would you like if you're having a prayer meeting, suddenly the place is packed, somebody breaking through your roof and putting a paralytic person into the dining? You would have been first worried about what? Huh? Who is going to make the roof now? We are not worried about the sick man. Ah, who is going to make the roof? Otherwise, before breaking, we'll say, don't worry, we'll pay for the roof. <laughs> now, we have all those great ideas. We'll pay for the roof, but is it okay if we break? No, break it, my brother, my sister. Today, this is faith. We need to break the roofs of today. Otherwise, what happens is, there is Jesus beneath, people are not going. So, we intercessors, if you, are, if you, are, you have to have the faith today. We have to have the faith. We need to carry the faith about you. If a person in your family is not believing, correct, it's okay. It's okay. What can you do? Your husband, your wife, your child, someone is not believing in Jesus. What are you going to do? Cry and wait and look at that person. No. Today, you are an intercessor. You carry that person. You carry that person to that roof. Break the roof and put him to Jesus. Put him to the feet of Jesus, my, my brother, my sister. Otherwise, what happens? We don't, we see the block and we go back home. We are not believing. Today, my brother, my sister, we have to carry the faith for other people. Are you willing to carry today? Are you willing to carry as an intercessor the person in your family? If you are not willing, you will always complain. If you will always complain, my brother, my sister, this is the faith of those four people that helped this man. This helped this man, my brother, my sister. There is always Jesus beneath the roof. There is always Jesus beneath your problem. Beneath all your tears, beneath all your problems, your issues, your crisis. There is one person and that is Jesus. When you meet him in that crisis, when you meet him in that problem, everything is going to be solved. So today, my brother, my sister, we need to trust. So that day I remember how it, you can break through. I was, supposed to do, I was supposed to do the morning prayer at, on that Pope's visit day. Uh, so Darshi was the one who was um, coordinating. So at about 4.30 she said, there's a huge crowd, why don't you come? I said, I'm ready. I went there by 5 o'clock. When I went down, you cannot can't even walk, not, can't even put an inch, that's it. Not even a leg somewhere to go in there. Now what to do? No, the, no one is allowing, I'm telling the security and I don't have a pass. No one is allowing me to go. Then Darshi called me and asked, what's happening? I said, I don't know, I'm standing here, I can't come. And actually, no way can you go, no way. Then she said, don't worry, I will come. What did she do? She came with a pass and the way she, she took, I, I had already given up, I thought no prayer in the morning, forget it. Because if they have not given us the pass and if I can't go, how am I going? How can I go there? But there was a way that God made through her. So there's always somebody has to take you. When you, are, you, when you lose that faith, when you don't have it and when you have given up, there God will give you someone. God will give you someone to carry you through. So she, God brought her with all, you know, she was pushing, saying, come, I have to go. Anyway, we fulfilled it. How you go through is all the barriers. And there would have been so many people, I mean, the, we had to break through roofs to walk in there. To fulfill God's mission. So what we would think is, oh, I have got the prayer, I need a pass and I only need to walk straight to that place, say my prayer, come back to my place. No. If you are having that idea today, God broke that. God broke that idea. He said, see, if I want, I will make it happen in your life. If I don't want, yes, it will not happen. But I will always send someone. My brother, my sister, remember, it's your duty today. We are all intercessors. We have to stand in faith for others, for your other family members. See, these people stood in proxy. These people's faith 
stood in proxy for this man's faith. Do you understand? So that's what we have in children baptism. Child baptism is the same. The, the godparents, the church, all the parents, everyone are standing in proxy for this child's faith who is incapable, who this child is incapable of faith. He doesn't, that infant doesn't know. But that's what the parents, the godparents, the whole church stand in proxy for that. So remember, that's why we have infant baptism. So we as godparents have a job to do. So my brother, my sister, what happened? You need to open this roof today. If you don't open this roof, you will not find Jesus. So we have to be intercessors. This is what you call intercessory prayers. Intercessory prayers is you carry someone in the stretcher. You need to carry in the stretcher. How? In faith. If you don't carry in faith, what happens? That's why we say, yeah, but we are doing this, but if you don't believe, nothing will happen. So we are scolding that other person whom we are carrying. We are expecting that person to have faith. Now we have done this, now you need to do the other part. There is nothing like that. Jesus is showing us, if you have faith, if you carry that in faith, the other person is going to receive it. That is what you call intercessory prayer, my brother, my sister. So we need to intercede in faith. And if you believe, I don't think that will happen, but anyway, I'll pray for you. That's how a prayer sometimes. I doubt, but anyway, nothing like praying, no? We say, nothing like praying. So we'll try praying. If it happens, it's good. If it doesn't, hard luck, my brother, my sister. So that's how it is. So then we have reasons. No, you are sick because you have done your past. You, saw you have done something wrong in your past. Or you are like this. You are an alcoholic. That's why you are sick. So then we are very easy. We just push the person out. But, my brother, my sister, God has a way. God is telling, you need to be a person, a carrier, a stretcher. You need to carry the stretcher in how, what? In faith. Carry it in faith. And put a person there. Don't, walk the, don't take the stretcher without a person. Put a person in that stretcher because all our prayers are for whom? Normally, for ourselves. <laughs> Put the person on that stretcher, my brother, my sister. Carry that person in faith. It's not only about me and myself and my family. Oh my God, yes, as long as our family get into an experience, that's okay. The rest, wherever they go, it doesn't matter. <laughs> my brother, my sister, we have a responsibility today. We need to put a person on that stretcher today. We need to put a person on that bed, a helpless person. A person, because this man was a paralytic, but this man's paralysis would have been not only physical, but a spiritual paralysis. He is not only a physical paralysis, but this man has been a physical plus a spiritual would have lost faith, complete faith. See how, how many years this person would have been and would have lost faith in vain. Now, okay, if you all are telling, I'll come. That's all. That faith he would have had. But see what happens. This man was, where was he put? Open the roof and put him at where? At the feet of Jesus. That's where we need to put these people, my brother, my sister. We need to pray. We need to take as intercessors these people to the feet of Jesus. That's a place to take. That's a place to take. After that, he will look after. It's nothing for us to do beyond that point. All what we need is to take him or take her to the feet of Jesus. So today, we're going to see what happened after that. When Jesus saw their faith... He said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. See the beautiful But When Jesus saw whose faith? Huh? Their faith. See, Jesus never saw these people putting, but Jesus saw their faith. When Jesus saw their faith, Jesus said, Son, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. 
I think that would have been the last thing that would a man would have expected. And I didn't come for my sins to be forgiven. No. Who wants the sins to be forgiven? First, here I, I can't walk. I can't talk. This man is telling, your sins are forgiven. What does it matter to me? <laughs> you know, this is our problem, my brother, my sister. Why? Jesus says, the first thing that he says is, your sins. Because Jesus sees the spiritual paralysis of this man. Jesus sees this man is paralyzed. Not because he's a physical paralytic, but he's spiritually paralyzed. What was his spiritual paralysis? He couldn't believe in Jesus. My brother, my sister, this is what many of us over here, we may be here, but have we given Jesus the first place in our life? Have we sorted out our own problems? Have we done, because have we depend on our money? Do we think our status, do we think our place in society can do something? If that is so, we are physically, spiritually, we are, especially we are spiritually, we are paralyzed. Because we have not given Jesus the first place in our hearts. That is the sinfulness in our lives today, my. It's not that you have killed someone, okay fine, that's, that's a sin. But that is because you are not giving Jesus the first place. When you give Jesus the first place, then everything will flow. Otherwise, what happens is, you have given somebody else or someone the first place in your life. That is the sinfulness of our lives today. Look at it today, today, my brother, my sister. How, who is in your heart today? Is it Jesus? Or now, are you carrying a problem in your office? If you're going to office, you know you have to do this, you have to do that. And you know, we have so many other issues at home. Are we having that today in our hearts? God says, your sins are forgiven. He wants to forgive all our sins. Is that is, he says, I will make sure that you belong to me. You belong to me. We'll see after that what happens. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves. Now who are these? Who are as Tata has taught us? The teachers of the law are what? Full of what? Knowledge. Full of knowledge. Now they know what is right, what is wrong, what, uh, what are the right things. They have studied everything. They have studied everything. So what happened? Now they are wondering what? They are thinking to themselves, hey, what's wrong with this man? <laughs> because what has taken over now? What did they see? Or oh, now the knowledge has taken over immediately. The knowledge has taken over their lives now. That is the Stata says, Dannava Vedi. <laughs> no. Dannava Vedikama has come up in now in front of you. See what happens to them. Verse 7. Why does this fellow talk like this? <laughs> like, he is blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Now see, they are, my brother, my sister, see, now we see these people, they know everything, but they don't know Jesus. What is the use today, my brother, my sister? You may know everything in life, but if you don't know, if you can't recognize Jesus in your life, in your crisis, in your little things, you are blind. We are, every one of us are blinded because we can't see Jesus. We can't see Jesus, but we talk about Jesus. We know about Jesus. We tell other people about Jesus. But in our own lives, we can't see Him. Here, they, can't, they don't know who can. How many of us can believe that our sins are forgiven? My brother, my sister, how many of us believe when we go for confession? We are truly, truly washed. We are truly washed. Or do we go sometimes because we need to go? Or have we really received this fabulous thing in our heart of your realizing, my God, my sins are forgiven. This is something we have to believe, my brother, my sister. Jesus can forgive your sins. And that's the sacrament. That sacrament is so, so valuable in your life. So valuable. That's something that we should do. And what happened? He can forgive. And these people are wondering, who is this man who is talking? 
that's what happens if you don't know jesus we will never receive that sacrament we are god is giving to us it's a free thing but we can't hold on to it because we don't know jesus verse 8 immediately jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts and he said to them why are you thinking these things today jesus is asking in a very short way from each and every one why are you thinking these things <laughs> why are you thinking like this today why do you think that your problem cannot be solved why do you think that this cannot be done by me why do you think that uh, i cannot forgive you see the crisis that we go through my brother my sister but jesus knows everything every little thing in our hearts verse 9 we'll which is easier to say to the paralytic your sins are forgiven or to say get up take your mat and walk see how he's come he's he's looking at two things he says what is the easiest thing is the sins are forgiven or take your mat and walk what happens if your sins are forgiven you go you are healed fully how if you take the mat and go you will only heal be healed physically that's all you will go and you will fall back into the same thing but jesus knows no this man is spiritually physically paralyzed every one of us are like that we are physically spiritually paralyzed god can say take the mat and walk but he says no there's something inside you that i need to heal you today if we are if that is not healed we will always remain the same my brother my sister that's why a lot of people come and they get healed but they don't come back after that <laughs> they don't come back after that see what happens after that but that you may know that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins he said to the paralytic i'll tell you get up take your mat and go home first of all he said your sins are forgiven and he was telling these people don't you know that i'm god maybe forget it you do if you just you don't now see what he does second he says take your mat and now go home go home what happened verse 12 he got up took his mat and walked out in full view of them all what did he do he didn't leave the mat remember my brother my sister all through that excitement he could have walked off without the mat i mean okay i'm healed okay run but what did he do he took the mat and he the mat resembled what was it represented what mat was the one he depended on so much because that's what people carried now he's telling i'm taking this mat i'm going to put someone else and i'm going to carry my brother my sister this is intercessory when you are healed you are not going to take the heal and healing and walk away now you are saying okay i'm going to take this mat i'm going to place someone in this mat i'm going to carry that person back to jesus to be healed my brother my sister today are you ready to carry someone are you ready to carry someone on this mat do you are you are you one of those four people are you the paralytic or are you the scribe today decide this morning my brother my sister are you willing today are you willing today to carry someone you are one of those four people who are going to take someone or are you the paralyzed person who is physically spiritually down but you know when you're healed you're going to carry that person or are you the scribe who knows all and who is blinded not knowing what happens my brother my sister this morning just believe that as intercessors this is the main intercessory thing that we need to this is what you teach in intercessory we need to carry others they may not have faith they may reject you but you are carrying them 
you are carrying them to the feet of jesus you are going to hold them and you are going to take and then what happens at the feet of jesus there is healing happening so this is what you call intercessory prayer my brother my sister so remember intercessory prayer is you need to carry others it's not about you all the time my uncle my daughter my cousin because we 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 come for intercessory and all my people no we have to make a point today i'm going to pray for someone and that person is not having faith it's okay fine he doesn't he's not having faith but i'm having faith i'm having faith that god is going to do something so if you are today are praying have faith my brother my sister carry that faith and that is what you are going to put that person on that stretcher and get hold of people that's why in that says we are two or three are gathered in my name i'm going to be present and when that happens people will be amazed so that's why we see when there are calls coming for intercessory groups and when they pray people jesus answers the prayers and they call back and say my child was healed the operation was successful it's not because anything else it's because of the faith of the intercessors if you don't have that faith you will not take that person to the feet of jesus so today we need to what do you need open the roof open the roof my brother my sister break the roof underneath the roof is who who is underneath the roof jesus is there so don't worry beneath the roof is jesus and let him down at the feet of jesus today so god is going to do that miracle in your life in my heart today so all what we need is to have that faith and believing that jesus is there in that crisis so today we we'll sing to the lord as we worship so are you going to be a scribe one of those four people or do you want to carry the mat decide <laughs> huh? if you want you will remain there otherwise you know scribes we we'll lose it <laughs> we will lose it you will be blinded you will not see jesus but beneath that roof is jesus remember that beneath that roof is jesus so we say we lay our crowns at the feet of jesus today that's something that's really good. that's one place that we need to live there's no other place my brother my sister so we have to believe trust that god is going to do something great in your life so carry the stretcher today carry it from now onwards you need you believe that god is going to do a healing the person that you are carrying because in my life i would say though i prayed for a person whom i was looking after inside me the doctors and all the others what they have given was dominating more than more than what i thought more than what i so that's a lack of faith that's a lack of faith even we go through crises like that you may go through a crisis but if you can tell someone now i realize if you tell someone please pray for my lack of faith somebody else will do it for you somebody else will do it for you because when you see some of your own family members when the doctors are told no luck because what the doctor says becomes so true in your life and that dominates your life and then you wonder though you want to pray but this whole thing comes out ah no no it's okay then you give up again so but you need to carry it let somebody else pray for you because that's what you mean by intercessory so we say we lay our crowns at the feet of jesus today so we all stand in the presence of our lord my brother my sister today our faith as we say our faith is going to stand in proxy like our faith is going to stand in proxy that's what you mean you know that's what we have to do today and uh, that's what i mean a community is that's a community because we are going to hold on maybe others don't believe many people don't want to come to jesus but i know i am going to carry them to jesus in faith and jesus says their faith has healed you their faith has healed you and that's our faith see we fall down
What is at the feet of Jesus? What is at the feet of Jesus? Greatness of His mercy, love at the feet of Jesus. Mercy and love at the feet of Jesus. That's why we carry people to the feet of Jesus, my brother, my sister. There is love, there is mercy. You may think that you are the greatest sinner. You may think that you are paralyzed with so many things, so many addictions. But at the feet of Jesus, there is mercy and there is love. That's where the transformation happens in our life today. At the feet of Jesus. So we are going to say, we fall down and we are going to take this decision. We fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus. No other place, my brother, my sister. No other place but at the feet of Jesus. Visualize Jesus standing before you today. At this moment in this hall, He stands before you and you lay everything everything one by one at the feet of Jesus and there is mercy and there is love waiting waiting for you to heal you to give you new life so we fall down and lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus this morning telling my son my daughter carry that faith in your heart today it's not only for yourself but for somebody else too. carry that faith and carry somebody else who is not even having that faith today I have given you that faith I have given it to you so that you may carry someone to the kingdom and lay them at my feet today so my brother my sister decide today at this place that you are going to pray in faith maybe two or three or even you alone even in our offices 
even in our places where we work in our families where we always have someone something that we don't want to face that we believe that person is a non believer that person cannot be changed we have already come into that conclusion but the lord says have a lot of mercy have a lot of love my son my daughter have a lot of love you cannot even imagine that love and that love is for each and every one of you and that mercy is for you i'm not going to select people but for each and every one of us he says if you see someone stand in proxy in faith i am going to heal them my brother my sister remember someone whom you are praying today at this moment a person but have that faith today don't see the negative sides of that person because we see the negative and we don't want to carry it further than that but we need to break the roof beneath the roof is jesus beneath the roof is jesus waiting we need to break and leave them at the feet of jesus my brother my sister don't look at the paralysis don't look at how paralyzed that person is look into your own faith carry that person breaking the wall leaving at the feet of jesus see yourself doing it now see yourself doing it now carrying that person don't look at the negative side of it don't see oh i can't i don't think no believe i'm not going to look at it all what i'm do is i'm going to carry break the roof and beneath it is jesus is waiting is waiting for you and me my brother my sister and he says their faith has saved you their faith has brought you here and that's you and me today my brother my sister that's our mission today that's our mission today we need to go like st joseph was who broke all barriers and came over here on the missionary because of that without seeing being a country where there was no god he was able to bring christianity into this country into rural areas places where we don't even think of it's not only the city not only the coastal areas but deep inside the country today we need to thank the lord so we have a mission today to take this word to carry this into the feet of jesus thank you lord shira varamandra varade hallelujah 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 shira varade we sing we fall down every one of us Lord Jesus that we have a mission in this world to carry people in faith Lord Jesus to your feet Lord as intercessors today Lord we believe Lord Jesus everything is possible Lord Lord you are going to heal them you are going to transform people Lord Jesus Lord thank you for calling us today Lord thank you for selecting us today Lord Lord we want to be one of the four Lord Lord we want to be one of the four Lord Jesus carrying others Lord Lord even as a paralytic Lord even if he have been paralyzed today Lord Lord we believe Lord that you are healing us and that same mat that we depended on we are going to bring people back to you Lord Jesus Lord we thank you today Lord Jesus for bringing each and every one of us into your presence Lord and showing us how much you love your mercy your grace 
your mercy falls on each and every one of us lord lord as we go to work today lord jesus lord let us carry this heart of intercession lord jesus that we may be able to pray for others lord jesus in times of crisis in times where people fail lord lord it's our duty lord that we may carry the others in a stretcher to your feet lord jesus so lord jesus strengthen each and every one of us so that we may do that lord lord without the power of the holy spirit lord we become nothing lord we thank you for strengthening each and every one of us today lord jesus thank you jesus hallelujah 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 praise the lord hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen saint joseph was saint joseph was saint joseph was thank you jesus hallelujah 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 lord praise you jesus thank you amen praise god